Father God, we just thank you and we praise you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we come as humbly as we know, Lord God, seeking your face, Lord God, seeking your forgiveness, Lord God, seeking you, Lord God, wanting to be in relationship with you, Lord God, wanting to take the walk with our Father, wanting to talk and hear from our Father. Father God, we ask now in the name of Jesus that you would forgive us from every sin, every trespass, Lord God, those things done intentionally, Lord God, those things said that we didn't mean to say, Lord God, those things done unintentionally, Lord God. Father, we ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for forgiveness as far back in our family line as it goes, Lord God. We pray now, Lord God, that nothing, Lord God, nothing would keep us or our families, Lord God, from having a relationship with you, Lord God. Father, we're seeking your forgiveness this morning. We want to be in a right standing, Lord God. We want to meet your son in the air, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in our daily walk with you, Lord God. Help us to change from our wicked ways, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be a people that follow after you, Lord God. Father, you are God, and there is no other, and we come to worship you this morning. We come to lift you up, Lord God. We come to seek your face, Lord God. We come to hear from you, Lord God. So we just ask that you just wash us in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse us now, Lord God, from head to toe, Lord God. Let the words of our mouths, Lord God, be recognized in your sight, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in our daily walk with you, Lord God. Help us to be the men and women you have called us to be, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, so that we can be in the position that you called us to be in, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, for when you've assigned us to someone to help and assist, Lord God, that we can do that, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, so that every assignment you've assigned to each of us will be completed in a spirit of excellence, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Father, we lift this day up to you. We lift every day up to you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We're just looking to you, Lord God. You are our provider. You are our saving grace. And this morning, we just want to lift up the families, Lord God, all over the world, Lord God. Those because of this virus, Lord God, are not having funds, maybe, to feed their families, Lord God. Not having the funds, Lord God, for housing, Lord God, for clothing, for the basic necessities, those that are struggling, Lord God, and crying out, Lord God. Father, we lift them up to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we're praying, Lord God, that no one would be without, that everyone would have their needs met. Those basic needs, Lord God, shelter, Lord God, Food, Lord God, water, Lord God, the, the things we need to, to sustain us, Lord God, until we pass this, Lord God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that if anyone, Lord God, doesn't have anyone, Lord God, listening, would be activated to assist the person, Lord God, in need, Lord God, whether it's a neighbor, Lord God, whether we're walking down the street, whether we're in a supermarket or seeing someone on a corner, if we can assist and help them and their families, Lord God, let us be a helping people after your heart, Lord God. Father, we lift up the children to you in the name of Jesus. We rebuke and bind the curse that says this virus is going to attack them in a certain way. We bind it up now in the name of Jesus and release the healing that's due, Lord God. That when the healing comes forth, it covers the children as well as the adults. It'll cover those with other illnesses also, Lord God. That by your grace, Lord God, healing would flow throughout the countries, Lord God. And then people would have to know that you, Lord God, truly are the one and only true and living God. 
We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for each new day, Lord God. Nothing is promised, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, with those hurt hearts, Lord God, that can't forgive, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, from anything that's keeping us from a relationship with you, Lord God. Father, we also bind those manipulating spirits this morning in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that think they know better than others, Lord God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that the United States would always be united, even though there are times it seems like it's separate states, people want to storm capitals with firearms and everything else, Lord God, or look for an excuse to start a race riot. We bind that now in the name of Jesus. We cover this country and every country in the, with the love of God. We ask that it be bathed in the love of God, that we can come to understand that we're all one people under you, Lord God, that none are better than anyone else, Lord God. You sent your son to redeem us all, not just certain ones, Lord God, but for all, Lord God. When he went to the cross, he went to the cross for everyone, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that the people come to understand these things and we can come together as one people under Christ. Our country, Lord God, be informed, Lord God, and God we trust for those, Lord God, that are in position seem to forget it. Help them to remember, Lord God, awakening in their spirit, Lord God. Help them to be the servants that they need to be to your people, Lord God, so that nobody, Lord God, nobody, Lord God, gets left behind. That every need is provided for, Lord God. Father, use those that have been put in office, Lord God, for to help the people they're supposed to help, Lord God. Father, help us, Lord God. We just seek you this morning. We seek your help, Lord God. We seek your help, Lord God. It shouldn't be people pulling trash from a garbage can, Lord God, to get something to eat. We're praying that people can have hot meals, Lord God. Have the basic necessities, Lord God, that everyone wants. Help us, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you this morning, Lord God. Father, we ask that you bless Pastor Linda this morning, Lord God, as she comes forth and brings forth your word this morning. We pray that everyone, Lord God, would give her their undivided attention, Lord God, and just soak in the word. Understand what we're trying to share from this spiritual perspective, that we're in a spiritual warfare. That's where this virus is coming from. Spiritual warfare, because God's people and the people of the earth decided that they know better than God. And there are consequences, and we have to get this right, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you empower your daughter to the next level, Lord God. That the words going forth, Lord God, would break someone's heart, Lord God. That they would bow down on bended knees, Lord God, and say, here I am, Lord God. And repent, Lord God, and seek your face, Lord God, and become a kingdom warrior. For the king, become a son and daughter for God's kingdom. We just thank you and praise you, Lord God. Father, you are mighty to be praised. We thank you for each night, Lord God, that you cover us and kept us, Lord God, and awaken us for another day, Lord God. For those of us that are still having jobs, Lord God, Father, I appreciate it. I take nothing for granted, Lord God, not being better than anyone else, Lord God. But we pray, Lord God, even those that have lost been laid off, that they would get their jobs back. They would get the better pay and the benefits due to them, Lord God, that they would have the back pay and everything. We establish to them that those that are holding on to all the money, those that, because of their work, they made rich, Lord God, would help them in their time of need and empty out those excess bank accounts and take care of the people that's been taking care of them, Lord God. Father, have your way this morning, Lord. 
We need you, Lord God. We need you, Lord. You have some selfish people out here, Lord God, while people are struggling just to feed their children, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Help us. If they don't want to help them, Lord God, we look to you. We look to you anyway, Lord God. You said you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You provided for us, so we know you can provide for anyone, Lord God. We've seen you do it time and time again. And that's why we can lift up your name in praise. That's why we can call you our Father. That's why we have no problem saying we love you. We love you, Lord God. Not just being a provider, Lord God, but because you first loved us. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Let the words, Lord God, go forth and help people, Lord God. Let them, Lord God, not be left behind. Let them meet us in the air when Jesus comes back, Lord God. Help people to understand they don't want to be here when Jesus comes back. We just thank you and praise you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Remnant family. We'd like to welcome you to another Sunday service here at Remnant International Church, our home-based ministry that was given to us from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And anything he tells us to do, we're going to do. Because we know where our help comes from, as I just said. We know who is God. We know what he has done for us and continually does for us. We know what he has brought us through. And we're no one special. Everything that he's done for us, he can do for you. Again, that's why we get up each Sunday to share. Even though nobody's here, we still share because he told us to. Hallelujah. So we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that everyone would just have the time, have the quiet place to listen in on the sermon that's going forth from Pastor Linda, that it would break every chain, every bondage, anything that's keeping you from achieving that which you're trying to achieve, but that you would achieve the things that God has set forth for you to do. See, he sent us here to do some work. Each of us have a job to do. And if we don't have a relationship, how are we going to hear from our Father to get the job done? So I pray this morning that the words going forth would speak to your spirit. And after hearing this sermon, you would change and fully commit to the one and only true and living God. With that, I'm going to step out of the way. And that's the Linda. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God all the glory this morning. Hallelujah. We praise his holy name. Hallelujah. We just thank Pastor Calvin for just setting the atmosphere you, and, Jesus. you know, praying those prayers that let God know that we are grateful thank even you, in the midst of this pandemic, that he has not stopped loving us, that he has not stopped providing for us, that he has not stopped positioning us to do what he has called us to do. Oh, Rabbi Shatta, I know online church is new for many, but that's where God has had us all along so that people can be reached no matter where Amen. they are. Amen. They can tune in. They can watch last week's sermon. Amen. They can watch last year's sermon. Amen. I mean, if you're in need of some word that's rooted in the Bible, you need to subscribe to our Remnant International Church channel on YouTube. Amen. Begin to watch. Begin to dissect begin to understand because we're not just about you know motivation right we are about discipling believers telling them what the bible says mm -hmm. and then dissecting it in a way so they understand how to proceed and how they can have what the word says amen, amen. hallelujah so Thank god you, is good so we're continuing this morning. I'm just going to 
just ask the Lord God, Lord, may I decrease this morning and just may everything that I'm speaking, God, be you and not me, that you will glorify, not me myself, that you would use me as an instrument to help those, God, who need and crave and hunger for a deeper understanding of you. I just thank you, Father, for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So today we are continuing the Strong Man series. Today we're going to be talking about seducing spirits, mm -hmm. which is really relevant and prevalent in this day and age because there's so many things out there seducing not just the world, but the people of God, and they don't understand it, so they don't think that they should combat it. And we need to be discerning people. We need to be people who understand what's in our atmosphere, who can see the enemy's agenda, what he's doing in education, what mm -hmm. he's doing in music, mm -hmm. and all of those things. We can't be sleeping Christians that are just like, Okay, let me wake up. Today is Sunday. I have to go to church. And then all week long, we're sleeping again. We need to be aware. We need to be sensitive to the Spirit yeah. of God. Because yeah. when you make yourself sensitive to the Spirit of God, He will unlock gifts. He will heighten your discernment even more. And He will allow you to see what's unseen by the naked eye. And that's where we need to be as believers. Amen. We don't need to just walk the walk yeah. and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. We need to have fruit, Amen. right? So Amen. our fruit should determine who and what we believe in. Amen. And that ties into seducing spirits yes, in so does. many ways. But yes, for the most part, seducing spirits don't want you to know the true and risen Savior, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. They come to seduce you away and lure you off to something else, mm -hmm. something that's a counterfeit God, something that's a counterfeit power. And there is only one power, mm -hmm. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and there is none greater than that, mm -hmm. right? The enemy's, the enemy's assignment and, you know, his agenda is to create a wedge, to create a breach between us and God. Mm -hmm. Right? He wants to hem us up with sin, all kinds of things that we shouldn't be caring about, the cares of the world, the lust of the eyes and the flesh, like scripture says, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's not sex, which is everywhere, then it's money. If it's not money, then it's the battle for power. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm better than you because I have this title. I'm better than you because I have this position. And if it's not power, then it's offense. We're offended with people who have a basic right to think and do what they want to do according to scripture. Right? And if it's not offense that he's hemming us up with, then it's sickness and disease, like what we're going through right now, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's not sickness and disease, then it's witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that before I just make my way through all of the other strong men that are linked together with the strong man of the seducing spirit. But a lot of times when you hear people say witchcraft, naturally, because of television, because of cartoons, we may think pointy hat, and we may think a broom, but that's not what witchcraft is limited to, Amen. right? Yes, witchcraft exists, mm -hmm. and there are people who cast spells and release word curses and speak curses over people. Mm -hmm. But for everyday Christians, what witchcraft can look like if you're not discerning is simply rebellion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Samuel, well, 1 Samuel, verse 15 and 23, clearly says, and it doesn't pull any punches when it says this, it says rebellion 
is as the sin of witchcraft mm -hmm. or divination in some versions mm -hmm. of the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Because it says you have rejected the word of the Lord. So we think that we can still do whatever we want and we think we can still be called his. But when you're doing whatever you want and you're rebelling about against exactly what the word says and the instructions we have as believers about what we're supposed to do, what we're supposed to think, and how we're supposed to behave, you're entering into the territory of witchcraft. You're volunteering for it. You're signing mm -hmm. up and saying, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I want. Yes, we are free moral agents, but we are free to follow the Lord or not follow the Lord. There's no straddling the fence. There's no following him on Sunday and then the rest of the week you're doing your own thing. Amen. You're operating in witchcraft unaware. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And God gives us chances after chances after chances. But there reaches a point where he will turn us over to a reprobate mind. That means you can't be corrected. You can't be reached. You're out there. You're just doing your own thing and you're no longer sensitive to the voice of God. And that goes along with a seared conscience. And, and that's one of the strong men. I'm going to get to that. But as believers, witchcraft should not be found among us. Amen. We should be doing what the word says. Amen. You don't mix new age stuff with the Bible and just think whatever works, hallelujah. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Amen. If you're Christian, you shouldn't be burning sage. Amen. I, I release video teachings on that on my personal channel, and it's one of the highly trapped, most highly trafficked videos out there because people think it's okay to burn sage. Mm -hmm. You're dabbling in things that God does not appreciate. The word lists, you do your homework, it lists things that God hates. And we have to be aware of those things so we are not found among those who do those things. Amen. 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 So yes, 1 Samuel 15 and 23, write it down, study it, let the Lord breathe additional revelation on that for you. But it says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Mm. So why do I say that? Because a seducing spirit will have you thinking, well, you don't really have to do that. Just like the snake in the garden. Mm -hmm. You shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. And you have to be aware of the subtle seducing spirits that will come to cause that breach. And that's exactly what the enemy did in the Garden of Eden. By telling, by telling Eve, you shall not surely die, you will be like God. You will be able to see, right? By telling her that and her giving heed to, to the seducing spirit, they were separated from God. That caused a breach. Amen? Amen. Remember, God desires, just like Adam and Eve, to walk with us in the cool of the day. Amen. You know, we're supposed to be so close to God that we can just feel him. We can hear him and there are no barriers. And that's what that's what God's ultimate desire has always been. But this seducing spirit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right? So the enemy creates the wedge with various things, right? And if it's not witchcraft, that it's false religion, right? Mm -hmm. And if the Bible doesn't say it, as believers, we shouldn't believe it, participate in it, or even give heed to it. Amen. Now, these are just a couple of facts. I just fed, felt led to share this. Joseph Smith published the Book of Mormon in 1830, right? He claimed to have seen a prophet in 1827 as an angel, right? 
that gave him the revelation that he needed to release this book, right? Well, we know as children of God and as those who feast on the word of God that people are people and angels are angels. Amen. So we don't die and turn into an angel. When Amen. people say that, it's just, you know, <laughs> yes, we, 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 our heart goes out if you lose a child, if you, if you lose a baby, if you lose a parent, if you lose a spouse, but they don't then translate and become a, he, a angel in heaven. That's just not how it works. Amen. So this religion is based on a lie. Mm -hmm. And that's what the enemy does, right? Mm -hmm. Charles Taz Russell, right? He was a spearheader of the Jehovah's Witness movement, which originated as a true Bible study group, right? A seducing spirit enters in, and now they're all left down in left field doing something totally contrary to the word of God. I just want to show you how all it takes is a seducing spirit mm -hmm. and a little error to come in, and then you have sex, sex, cults, denominations doing all sorts of things that their leader thinks is right, but is not in the word of God. And the word of God is what we base everything on. Mm -hmm. There are no if, ands, and buts. There's mm -hmm. no, oh, well, I don't really like to do communion, so we're not going to do that here. You know, we have to stand on what the Word says because it's the final authority, right? Amen. So, amen. Hallelujah. So when you ask how the enemy gets in, it's because we aren't securing our hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. We let anything go. Mm -hmm. We watch anything. We listen to anything. And we live in a society that's so dead set on being politically correct. Well, I'm a Christian, but you know, I don't want to hurt the feelings of those who believe and practice the same sex marriage thing, right? Or you don't want to offend this group. We must realize that Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth and he offended many. He offended those religious zealots who thought that they were so high-minded that they couldn't even grasp his basic truths in the Word of God. Amen. Right? Amen. We have to guard our hearts as believers. We have to guard our ear gates. We have to guard our eye gates. We have to be so sensitive in the spirit that when something comes before us, we scrutinize it before we indulge in it because the enemy can come like an angel of light. Amen? Amen. People get mad at me because, you know, if people, are, they're always sending me something. So because I release prophecy online, I share, um, you know, Remnant does its thing, they want to say, oh, check this out, check that out. And I'm not led necessarily to just indulge in everything that's out there, right? Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's your best friend preaching. I don't care if it blessed your socks off. It has to pass, God, should I be listening to this? God, should I be watching this? It has to pass that test because... That's my safety. That's my, my boundaries. And that's what our boundaries can, should be, not can be, mm -hmm. should be as followers of Christ. Right? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The thing is, is that when we let anybody and everybody pour into us without mm -hmm. first discerning, it can be disastrous because... Everyone who holds a microphone isn't ordained by God. Mm -hmm. Everyone standing behind one of these isn't ordained by God. Mm -hmm. When people say, come on, take a listen, who's it going to hurt? Those are the same people that says, well, everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. And we're not here to be conformists. We're here to be advocates of Christ 
to stand on his word and to effect change by discipling believers and drawing people to the cross of Christ and the kingdom of God. Amen. Right? Amen. And here's one of the ways that you know people are easily manipulated by these seducing spirits, right? Those who will ride and die for Jesus, for God, the word, um, like Esther was, if you remember Esther in the book of Esther, who said, if I perish, I perish, right? They praise God, right? They praise God when things are going wonderful. They praise God when they're getting checks in the mail. They praise God, you know, if they meet a man, they start dating, and it could possibly lead to marriage, right? They're singing, praise the Lord. He hasn't failed me yet, and all the other upbeat songs. But in the midst of adversity, their countenance is shifted. Right? Mm -hmm. Their countenance is dictated by what they're going through instead of who they serve. Because when you serve Jesus, the perk is always eternal life. The perk is always, I'm going to see Jesus face to face one day. The perk is never all of the miscellaneous stuff that goes on around us because we know we're on the earth and we still have that promise of heaven one day. Amen? Amen. Seduction is a plan of Satan. Here, down a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Seduction is a plan of Satan. Like I said, it means us no good. And if you're familiar with music, right, music has a seducing effect on people. And even when I was in the world, and I'm going to share this really quickly, when um, I was in the world, I loved music. But the thing about music I loved more than just the beat were the lyrics. It was always important to me to know what I was saying. So I remember, you know, buying albums, buying cassettes, and pulling the liner out and following along with the words because I always wanted to know what I'm saying. But for the most part, people don't do that. They don't care. They're, you know, they're at a party and they're saying all kinds of things. The music is seducing them to just go with the flow and say whatever the artist is saying, even though, even though it does not line up to scripture even to the point that they could be speaking things over their own lives, right? Mm -hmm. There came a point, however, that I became so serious about Jesus, and I just felt his urging, you need to get rid of that music. Now, I might have had about 200 CDs. It was a lot. And I remember the horror of my friends when I took those to an incinerator and burned them. Can you imagine how much 200 CDs are worth? It just mattered that I wanted to be correct in God's eye. And when God says, do this, when he says, get rid of something, you do it. Amen. Right? Amen. It could be a precious necklace that your grandmother gave you. It could be anything under the sun. But again, it goes back to what I said previously. Do we want to be obedient to God? Or do we want to rebel and then start operating in witchcraft because we're picking and choosing what we're going to do? Right? Mm -hmm. Let me read this from the book, and it's concerning music, and it's eye-opening. And here's the thing. For some reason, I don't know, Christians just think, okay, when I become a Christian, I'm in this little bubble, and I don't have to worry about the devil or the enemy out there. He's laced through so much stuff that you have to spend time in the presence of God to get strategies on how to deal with things in the everyday world. 
But here's what it says. Much of the music on the top 40 charts has been written by witches and people actively involved in the occult. Mm. Some of the biggest hit records were not released until they were blessed, so to speak, in a witch's coven. They entreat demonic spirits to go with each record and be a direct influence on the minds and lives of the listener. The seducing beat of the music is the same that is used in the jungles to conjure up evil spirits and cast voodoo spells. Mm -hmm. The latest trick is the use of back masking to implant subliminal suggestion in the listener's mind without them being aware. So back mask is a backwards message, you know. They, you play it backwards and it says something, but when you're playing it forward, I mean, you're just totally unaware that it's there and speaking over it, right? So a seducing spirit is a strong man. It's controlling the majority of the music that's out there. There was a point in time I was like, okay, let's just have a mix of the, you know, the gospel music and you know, the regular music, but you don't know. You don't know what was possessing the person as they're in the recording studio booth, uh, you know, just crooning out this tune that you love so much, right? You don't know if they were smoking, if they were drinking, if they were tripping on LSD, and you don't need that in your life. You know, there are people who think, oh, that's just a little too deep for me. And those are usually the people afflicted by this, that, and the other thing. And then they eventually, years later, need to seek out the deep people that they said were so deep to help them because of what they're going through in their life. So a seducing spirit is a strong man. And, and spirits that align with that, and I'm going to go through some of them, hypocritical lies, right? Proverbs 12 and 22 says, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Are you trustworthy? When you say you're going to do something, unless it's extenuating circumstances, do you follow through? You know, we don't think of any, we don't think anything nowadays about breaking our promise to people or promising to pay and then not or doing the opposite. But we need to know. It says the Lord detests. Look up the word detest. He detests lying lips. And here's why. Look at John 8 and 44. It says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So, you know, the enemy's native language just naturally is lies. Mm -hmm. So we want no part of that, right? Amen. So when you lie or bend the truth, because, you know, we like to say, well, I didn't really lie. There's only a truth and then there's a lie. There's no in-between, okay, you really didn't lie. You lie, you lie, you lie. Amen? So when, when you lie or bend the truth, you're showing who your father is. You are. You are. You are showing where your allegiance is. Right? And there's no such thing as a little white lie. Can I just say that? I don't know why we call it a white lie, like it's better than, you know, a lie. But a lie is a lie. Amen. When you lie, you are showing. And that's a strong, that's a strong man. That's a strong man that needs to be broken off in Jesus' name. Amen. When you lie, you lie. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So I was talking earlier about the seared conscience, right? Mm -hmm. James 1 and 14 says, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. 
So what is a seared conscience? The picture given by the Apostle Paul is one in which a person's conscience or convictions have been desensitized. Right? So that means through repeated exposure to evil, a person's sense of right or wrong can become numb, right? To the point that a, a person can no longer distinguish between good and evil. It's almost like they desensitize us with some movies, right? They, they expose you to violence in movies or in TV shows so that you'll readily accept it in your everyday life and everyday work. Okay, that's just... You know, that's just the gangs. Okay, that's just, you know, local burglars breaking into people's house. We are never to become okay with those types of things. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, the bottom line with the seared conscience is you don't want that to be you. You don't. You don't ever want to be so deep in sin that you can no longer hear the voice of God saying, don't do that. You better not. Don't open that door or stop doing that. Put that down. Get rid of that object. You want to always be sensitive enough to hear how God is leading you. Because God is not wasteful. You know, when you get to the point where he's like, okay, I can't tell them anything. They have totally made up their mind that sin is it and that's what they want to do for the rest of their lives. Research reprobate mind. He will turn you over to that. He will turn, oh, turn you over to that. You don't ever want to be so deep that you don't hear God's voice. Amen. One of the keys of having a relationship with God is communing with him and hearing his voice. So if you're not doing that, you know, just imagine a relationship with someone you love, not being able to communicate with them, right? or them not being able to communicate with you. So let's talk about the seared conscience, right? To be seared is to be burned, right? If you were to put iron to your skin, it will kill the skin. The intensity of that heat will kill the skin, and the skin will no longer be sensitive to the touch, right? You know, they have degrees of burns, you know, but for the most part, it will kill the skin. And even after the skin underneath starts to heal, what's on top will peel off, right? Mm -hmm. We always want to stay sensitive. And you stay sensitive to the spirit by spending time with God. Amen. Reading his word daily is part of it. But the major part of it is just being still and hearing what God wants to say to you. Mm -hmm. What does he want to say? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might be simple. Good morning, my son. Good morning, my daughter. You want to be sensitive enough to hear that. So, you know, we have to be aware of these things. Seared conscience is nothing to play with. You know, the enemy wants to entice us with sin so much that we get so deep that we think, oh, well, God couldn't possibly help me. I'm too far gone. I've heard people say that. I'm too far gone. Nobody's too far gone. But once you taste and see that the Lord is good, you don't return to the vomit. You don't go back to that stuff again. Why? Because these strong men that we've been going through for weeks, they will come back with spirits seven times greater seven times more in population, and it will make, make it harder for you to get out of that thing again. So that's why you can't smoke crack, get delivered from crack, and then go back to crack, or alcohol, or whatever your drug of choice, or thing of choice is. Amen? Amen. I don't care who the word comes through, that you can do something contrary to what his word says. If it's your favorite preacher and he's telling you something that's not scripture based and that's just what he thinks or she thinks and they believe, run, 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 run. Another strong 
strong man is attractions, fascinations mm -hmm. by false prophets and signs and wonders. The key thing here, even before I get, begin breaking this down, is you can't love gifts more than the giver of the gifts. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, oh, I want to flow in miracles. I want to touch people and heal them and make them well. But you don't have that same zeal for God and to just sit in his presence. You have to love the God of heaven more than these gifts, these signs, wonders, and miracles. If all God ever said for me to do is stand here and teach, I would do that. It's not necessary that people fall out. It's not you know, necessary for people to get up out of wheelchairs and walk for me to do what I'm called to do as a servant of God. Amen. Right? We all know about false prophets. We've heard people call people false prophets. You know, so many of us have itching ears. We want a word, but we don't want to seek God for ourselves. So we go chase down the ones that we assume or in God's face and in his presence and truly hearing him. So that what happens with that is that we are led out by false prophets that are really no different than psychics, right? You open the door to them out of ignorance, and next thing you know, all the things, all the lies that they're speaking as false prophecy are being spewed out and your life starts to take the shape of whatever they're speaking over you, just like witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? When a false prophet speaks over your life, you better break that thing. Amen. You better break it because they're calling themselves prophets, but they're just word curses that they're speaking over you. Words to manipulate, words to get stuff out of you, words to get you to respond in a certain way. You know, when you build up your relationship with God to the point that you can hear him from for yourself, you won't be stalking and chasing prophets. I can't tell you how many messages, well, not so much now, but I used to get messages where people were like, what is the Lord saying about me? It doesn't work like that. Go in your closet, pray, ask him what he's saying about you. God truly did not tell you to message this woman of God that you don't know from a can of paint to hear what I'm saying about you when we should have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. Amen. I mean, it's just the truth, right? Amen. So, you know, this whole attraction and fascination and lure and things that draw us to people who look like they have this super deep relationship with God. There's nothing wrong with sitting under a powerful man or woman of God. There's nothing wrong with hearing what God is saying through them. But when we are drawn to them more than we're drawn to the God of heaven, there's an error there. There's a breakdown there. There is a seducing spirit there. Amen? Amen. So, I mean, it's a stronghold, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, you don't want to end up in witchcraft. And that's what happens when you start seeking after things, idols, because if you're chasing after prophets, pastors, apostles, whoever, if you're chasing them more than you're chasing God, then they have become an idol to you, and that is not pleasing to the Lord, right? I tell people all the time when they come, they're asking me, you know, sometimes even if I know them personally, well, what do you think God means by that? I had this dream. What do you think? I think you should ask him. Mm -hmm. I think you should build up the rapport with God so that when you dream or when you're questioning a certain thing, you're able to ask him and sit and wait for the answer to hear what he's saying. Many times, you know, we want this instant gratification. You know, it has taken me years to grow, and I'm still growing. So as believers, we all have to go through that process, right? Amen. You don't want to get to the point where you want a word or a prophecy more than you want God, right? Amen. If 
you want a sign of gold flake, because you know, many of people experience that when the glory of God comes, you know, they see gold flakes, they see angel feathers. If you want that more than God, you are falling into a trap. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you seek God first, those signs follow. That's just how it works, right? Deception. That's another strong man, right? And deception is just what it says. Deception, it deceives. When it takes root, it controls you, it cages you, and it holds you captive. Deception is tricky, right? Because it's subtle and can easily lead you down a dark road. Just like I talked about the false religion. Their false religion started with deception. They started believing things that weren't true. You see somebody manifesting as an angel, you better believe that's demonic. That's not God. That's not God. Amen. But once you believe it, you're opening the door and telling it, welcome. You're welcome to bring more deception to my life. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you're praying, you need to be praying for this stuff to be broken off you, all deception, all of that stuff. You know, if, if someone comes and tells you something, it could be the most glorious word. You're going to be married in three years. And I use that a lot because many people use marriage as an idol. They idolize marriage, right? So anything along the lines that's telling them what they want to hear, they happily go with it because in their heart they want to be married when you should be preparing yourself for marriage. Yeah. Don't go chasing every marriage prophecy. Yeah. You need to steward your your devotion time and your attention to God because when you focus on God, only then are you ready to be married. Yeah. Only then are you ready to steward and carry your spouse in prayer. There are people who want to be married and they don't even have a prayer life. You think you don't have to pray when you get married? You better have a prayer life now so that when your family or your husband, if they ever go through anything where they need God to move, that you can be used as that vessel to help move whatever needs to be moved out of the way. Amen. That's just how it works. Marriage is not, oh, I just want to be married so I can have sex or so I can hold hands or so I can be walking down the street, you know, making other people jealous or whatever your deep-rooted reason is for wanting to be married so badly, mm. right? We need to check ourselves because sometimes what we want is based on a movie we saw. So you saw this movie and you're like, wow, I want that. And then you started stalking marriage like marriage was the God and God was like the sidekick. Okay. You can't do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Deception is tricky. Mm. Deception is tricky. Amen? Amen. So the Bible talks about deception. First John 2. I'm going to actually read verses 18 through 26, but write the scripture down. You know, it's not just enough to listen to the sermon. You need to go back over these scriptures. You need to highlight. You need to say, Lord, is, is, examine my life. You know, am I in error where your word is concerned? Correct me. And we should be doing that on a daily basis. The scripture starts at, at verse 18 and it says, little children. It is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, by bit whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father 
and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same has not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son has the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Amen? Amen. So they talk, he's talking about knowing the difference, right? Those who are with us and, you know, if they were still with us, if they were really with us, they would still be with us. They would not have departed and be led out by seducing spirits, false religion, and all things that are contrary to God. He's telling us that the promise that God promised us is eternal life, right? So those who are in Christ, that is their reward. Those who are led out by seducing spirits, they have their temporarily, temporary, you know, momentary reward. They have their little false prophecy. They have their little, you know, new sect or new denomination or whatever thing it is that they're chasing after. But the bottom line is deception is real. Deception is real. Amen. And how you protect yourself <laughs> from deception is to be girded up with the full armor of God, right? Mm -hmm. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the belt of truth, right? The shield of faith and the sword, which is the word of God. Amen. You have to stay protected. You know, many of us just think, you know, you know, I don't really feel like it today. Then you are opening yourself up to possibly being infiltrated. If God wakes you up with breath, your breath should be, thank you, Father, for waking me up in this new day. And then begin, begin to put on your garments. You wouldn't wake up, take off your clothes, and just walk around all day just undress. Hopefully you wouldn't do that. And likewise, spiritually, you have to be clothed. That's what keeps these strong men from infiltrating any little cracks, right? Amen. I've said this before, but the enemy's not going to be like, oh, I'm not going to infiltrate her life because she doesn't really understand that, you know, that's a doorway, so I'm going to leave her alone. No, the minute a crack is available, the enemy is going to try and get in that crack, right? Mm -hmm. That's why, again, it's so important what we see, what we hear, what we partake of, right? Amen. Amen. Wandering from the truth, or wander from truth. That's another strong man. And see, a lot of times these strong men are named for what they do. So this particular strong man, its job is to get you to wander from the truth. So how does it do that? It might tell you something that's partial truth and partial lie to get you to come to the side of the enemy, right? Deuteronomy 13, verses 16 and 8, verses 6, sorry, through 8. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thy own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou, thou nor their fathers, namely the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even until the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thy eye pity him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thy conceal him. Wow. 
Sometimes we can feel obligated to believe what our family believes, right? You have people who grow up Jehovah's Witnesses, so they couldn't imagine not believing everything their family believes, right? Or maybe you, you come from a family of believers and someone goes out and gets seduced by a spirit, a false religion, and then wants to come and spread around the family this new enlightened thing they discovered, right? Make sure you stay clad in the armor of God so that your discernment is always keen and sharp. You've heard Pastor Calvin talk about that discernment. You can't drive home that point enough. We have to be discerning because, discerning because if you're not discerning, then you're really going through your spiritual life with blindfolds on. Amen. You're just like, oh, a person is a person. Oh, this is a nice lady. This is a nice man. You have to be able to discern the intentions Amen. behind it, and you have to be able to discern who sent that person to you. Amen. 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 God is the truth, and his son is the savior. Mm -hmm. You don't want to wander off into some other belief system and think that Buddha can give you something. Mm -hmm. You don't want to wander off and think, hmm, maybe some of that stuff Muhammad said is right, right? Mm -hmm. There is no one, no one greater than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, there is none that stands equal. There is none, or rabashete, that is more powerful. There is no comparison. Amen. Amen. We have to be careful what we, we become fascinated with. Sometimes it's the newness of something. Sometimes we want to be the one in our family that does something different. I remember growing up, right? I had two friends in high school. I remember getting saved when I was 16 years old, right? And I had these two friends, and one was a Jehovah's Witness. And I remember there were times that I called her house, and her mother would say, she can't come to the phone right now. She's studying her books. So they have like a series of books they have to study. And I had another friend, and she just decided, oh, I want to do something different. And she started exploring the Muslim faith. Right? So we might be we might think that it's cute to have this variety, but I can tell you that the stuff both of my friends went through, God could have kept them from. Amen. Amen. So here I am all these years later, still believing. God has been an example in my life. He has used me and continues to use me because I submit or I try my very best to just submit to him daily so that it's less of me and more of him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we have to be careful of what we become fascinated with. Hmm. People are quick to introduce you to something, right? And get you to listen to something. And in the end, you'll be the one off somewhere worshiping a tree. You don't want that to be you. Amen. You don't want that to be you. Or drinking the Kool-Aid. I saw that on TV you know, this past week. And, you know, there's so many people that follow people that they think are the real thing or the upper echelon thing or the, you know, the great thing. And, you know, we're this elect group and, you know, you should join us. And next thing you know, they're serving Kool-Aid. You don't want that to be you, right? Amen. Amen. The Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. There's something else I wanted to share really quickly. And then we're going to pray against this because, Amen. you know, the bottom line is that <laughs> we can't ever think that we've arrived. The enemy's goal is for none of us to make it to heaven. That's a place he can never go no matter how hard he tries, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
So I'm going to read um, what Tim, what Paul warned Timothy about, right? That in the last days, perilous times shall come. We're living in perilous times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. That's a caution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we have to stand on the word of God. That's how we defeat the enemy. Ignorance will make you a victim, but knowledge, understanding, revelation, and discernment gives you the power to overthrow anything that the enemy tries to bring your way to bring into your life. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray right now. Amen. We're going to give God the glory for our eyes being open today thinking, wow, I didn't know I was rebellious because I was doing my own thing. Wow, I didn't realize you can't let everybody pour into you. Wow, I didn't, whatever it is you didn't realize, this is your chance to just get it right with God and say, okay, now I know. I'm not going to do that. Let me focus more on God than I'm focusing on a prophecy, than I'm focusing on marriage, than I'm focusing on money. Whatever your focus is, that supersedes God, that is your God. So you need to bring things in their right order. Amen? Amen. So we're going to say this, and I'm going to pray this, and then we're going to rejoice and give him glory for having broke off anything that needs to be broken from our lives today. And again, if this is your first time tuning into us, or you tune into us consistent, inconsistently, I just encourage you to go back from when we first started with this Strongman series and go through each and every one because you don't know, we don't always know what's operating in us. We don't always know what's gotten access. We are like sponges and we grow up as little children just accumulating different things and thought processes and we call it our personality, but we need to make sure everything that's in us is what God desires to be there. Amen? Amen. So, dear Father, forgive me for allowing the world to creep into my heart and life. I can see how deceptive the enemy is and I know only your word can guide me through the spiritual minefields that lie ahead. I promise to read your word each day and seek your guidance for my life. Amen? Amen. Now, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind your seducing spirits according to Matthew 8 and 18 that says, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I realize you are trying to cause us to depart from the faith, so I command you to leave us alone from this moment on. I have, we have chosen to follow Jesus, and that leaves you out. Go in the name 
of Jesus. Go. And then we thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for freeing us now from the evil spirits that were trying to deceive us. I loose your Holy Spirit, Father, in our lives according to Matthew 18, 18, that tells us whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I thank you for giving us victory over every power of the enemy, and I appropriate the mind of Christ to be mine according to your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I pray even now that you feel a difference or watch it again from the beginning. We have to fully understand what we're believing as believers so that we can walk accordingly, right? God gives us the instructions, but it's up to us to implement, right? So it's not just enough for me to just pray the prayer and you sit there. You have to be an active participant. You have to say, Lord, forgive me for this, that, or the other thing so that the manifestation, so the healing, so the deliverance, so the breaking of these strongholds off your life can happen. Amen? Amen. I pray this word has blessed you, Father. We pray that you would just cover it, Father, with the name of, with the blood of Jesus, and that nothing, Father, that you desire for us to implement in our lives depart from us, God. Show us how continuously to move as you would have us to move, go as you would have us to go. Increase our discernment in this hour, Father God. We pray even now, Father, that our time with you as it increases, that you will show us oh, special things, hidden things. Reveal to us the promises, Father, that you have for us, God. Let us not walk in ignorance, but let us walk steadfast, God, according to your word and your instruction. I just seal this word with the precious blood of Jesus. I command anything trying to cause a breach or a malfunction of this teaching to be canceled right now in Jesus' name. We thank you and we love you. I just give God all the glory this morning, God, for his word being spoken and for your willingness to receive. Amen. Amen.